Of the thousands of miles of paved roads in the United States, more than 90% are surfaced with asphalt, either hot mix asphalt or asphalt surface treatment. This extensive use of asphalt paving is based on product availability, ease and low cost of construction, durability, and low life cycle costs inherent in this versatile paving system. One of the important components often used in asphalt hot mixes is hydrated lime, which serves as a combination anti-stripping agent, filler, and modifier. Besides reducing moisture sensitivity, it also increases initial stiffening, thereby helping minimize rutting. And it reduces long-term oxidative hardening of the asphalt. All of these advantages contribute to making better pavements having longer durability. The use of lime in asphalt paving began in the early 1900s, first in a patented process called Warrenite, later in an emulsion mix called Amosite. Both were successful, but in time these proprietary processes were phased out. In the meantime, this use of hydrated lime decreased due to the introduction of proprietary liquid anti-stripping agents and the use of pulverized limestone as a filler. The resurgence of lime use occurred during the late 70s when many pavements suffered distress as a result of increasing traffic and wheel loads, higher tire pressures, changing asphalt characteristics brought on by the Arabian oil embargo, and use of thinner surface courses. Of the various modes of distress, raveling, rutting, cracking, Perhaps the most serious of all was loss of adhesion and cohesion from water getting between the asphalt and the aggregate, causing the asphalt to be stripped away. Hydrated lime, because it leads to more permanent bonding between asphalt and aggregate, has become an important additive in asphalt paving. Several states, like Georgia, the leading state, now use lime on all major asphalt paving projects, including interstate and primary. Georgia has more than 100 hot mix plants, both batch and drum mix, that are equipped to add lime. Other leading states include Colorado, Montana, Nevada, New Mexico, Oregon, South Carolina, Utah, Texas, Virginia, and Wyoming. According to a recent survey, lime is now being specified in over half the states as an anti-stripping agent. Methods of treatment to reduce stripping include use of compatible asphalt, cement, and aggregate, plus additives and or modifiers where needed. According to a 1991 TRB report, moisture damage in asphalt concrete, pre-treatment of aggregate with lime, typically used at one to one and a half percent, is the most effective method. Various liquid anti-stripping agents, particularly amines, are also used, but their effectiveness varies considerably. There are various theories regarding the adhesion of asphalt to aggregates. One relates to surface chemistry, and it helps explain why lime is so effective. Most stripping occurs with acidic or silica-bearing aggregates having negative charges, and with clay-coated gravels also having negative charges, largely due to the clay. Since asphalt cements contain acidic components, for example, carboxylic acid, the bond is weakened due to like negative charges repelling each other. When hydrated lime is added, its basicity, positive charges, enhances the bonding due to opposite charges attracting each other. One of the common silica-bearing rocks used in asphalt paving is granite, which contains more than 50% quartz or silica. Other siliceous rocks include sandstone, quartzite, rhyolite, basalt, and siliceous limestone. Clay gravel is another aggregate known to strip. With this type of aggregate, lime reduces the plasticity of the clay and also increases the strength of the mix. There are numerous advantages of adding lime to asphalt paving mixes, including improved resistance to moisture, less stripping, increased strength and stability, increased initial stiffness, reduced long-term viscosity and age hardening. 
Increased ductile flow at low temperature. Increased pavement durability. The first advantage, less stripping, is noted in the boiling test, in which loose hot asphalt mix is boiled for 10 minutes, cooled and drained, and the sample is then compared visually to a rating board. Mixes retaining less than 70% of their color are considered moisture susceptible. With this gravel mix, 1% lime increased the retained asphalt from 10 to 75%. With the limestone mix, the improvement went from 60 to 80%. The second advantage of lime is demonstrated in the modified Lachman tensile splitting test as filmed at a Georgia DOT lab. With this method, granite asphalt mixes are made with and without lime, compacted, and the cylinders then tested wet and dry. In this procedure, half of the specimens are placed in a vacuum saturation chamber, where they are conditioned by dropping the pressure during a 30-minute period. After soaking, the specimens are frozen for 15 hours, thawed in a hot water bath for 24 hours, cooled for three hours, then tested in the tensile splitting device. After the vacuum saturation and freeze-thaw steps, this conditioned specimen, made without lime, broke at 250 pounds, or only 16 PSI. The dry strength of the companion sample was considerably higher, giving a retained strength, that is, wet over dry, of only 25%. In contrast, the lime-treated specimen, following vacuum saturation and freeze-thaw, achieved a much higher strength of 85 PSI. The retained strength of the lime-treated mix was 85%, easily meeting George's 80% requirement. A more graphic example of lime-enhancing bond strength can be seen following tensile splitting. With the lime-treated specimen on the left, the break occurred across many of the granite particles, indicating strong bond. With a control sample on the right, the break occurred around the grains, not across them. The bond was much weaker without lime. The lime-containing specimen was also much darker than the untreated specimen, the latter stripping much more during this rigorous test. This contrast in color is also evident with several other test cylinders. Similar results occurred with California gravel mixes. Without lime, the tensile strength of the mammoth control specimen dropped nearly 200% after Lotman curing. With 1% lime, the drop in retained strength was negligible. With the merino aggregate, the lime-treated mix after Lotman curing actually gained in strength. In the Texas freeze-thaw pedestal test, Briquettes of asphalt mixes are placed on a stress pedestal in water and subjected to daily freeze-thaw cycles until failure. Without lime, this river gravel control mix went only five cycles before cracking. With lime, more than 25 cycles. Tests were also made with several liquid anti-stripping agents, mainly amines, and none of the samples went more than six cycles before cracking. Since lime serves as a mineral filler in asphalt mixes, it increases the viscosity of unaged asphalt. This in turn increases high temperature stiffness, as shown in a Western Research Institute test. The dynamic modulus, or stiffness, of the Boscan asphalt increased with increased lime additions. This increase in stiffness in newly constructed pavements should provide better protection from rutting caused by the pounding action of traffic. Of course, the subject of rutting is complex, as was pointed out in a recent research report of the National Center for Asphalt Technology. Among the potential causes for rutting cited were mixed design, aggregate grading, asphalt viscosity, and moisture sensitivity. The fourth advantage of lime relates to aged asphalt. WRI tests have shown that the viscosity, or hardening, of aged, lime-treated asphalts is actually lower than that of untreated asphalts. This is illustrated in the WRI Thin Film Accelerated Aging Test, which ages asphalt in the lab in three days to a level normally reached after 10 years of pavement surface. 
An aging index is derived by dividing the viscosity of the aged asphalt to that of the unaged asphalt. With the four asphalts tested, the addition of 20% lime, equivalent to about 1% lime in a typical asphalt mix, reduced the aging index substantially. The Boscan showed the greatest reduction from about 200 to 25, followed by the West Texas Maya blend from about 340 to 50. Even the North Slope Maya blend improved from about 90 to 30. Because of this dramatic reduction in age hardening, lime-treated asphalts have greater flow properties as indicated in the low temperature ductile flow test. The untreated aged asphalts failed from brittleness between 5 and 10 percent elongation. In contrast, three of the lime-treated asphalts went the full 15 percent elongation without fracturing, and the fourth one approached 15 percent, well above that of the untreated sample. Now let's switch from lab tests to actual field tests to illustrate how lime improves the durability of asphalt pavements. Field cores from numerous lime-treated asphalt pavements in Georgia were evaluated periodically for stripping. Even after eight years of service, 80% of the cores still showed no stripping. Georgia data also revealed that after seven years of service, the tensile strength of cores taken from projects still exceeded 135 PSI, about a third higher than after age six months. Finally, a field study in Utah demonstrated that after eight years of service, the viscosity or hardness of the asphalt taken from the lime-treated layer was only half that of the control pavement which had no lime. These last three graphs clearly illustrate how hydrated lime improves durability by reducing stripping, improving tensile strength, and reducing age hardening. In the production of hot mix asphalts, there are many ways that hydrated lime can be added to the asphalt mix. The procedure is relatively simple, utilizing a minimum of standardized equipment, including facilities for lime storage, feeding, transferring, and mixing. Both drum mix and batch plants can be readily fitted with lime handling equipment to ensure production of high quality hot mix asphalt. The lime typically used in asphalt hot mixes is dry hydrated lime. However, lime slurry made from hydrate can also be specified. But it increases costs because the water needed to make the slurry increases aggregate drying time and lowers the production rate. Dry quick lime should never be used unless it is converted to a lime slurry by slaking in a unit like the portable batch slaker. Hydrated lime is delivered in bulk tanker trucks. The lime is blown through a flexible hose to a large upright silo. Extra storage can be handled in large horizontal tanks called guppies. If only one silo is installed, it should be large enough to hold one and a half to two truckloads of lime, approximately 35 to 50 tons. With hydrate having a bulk density of only 25 to 30 pounds per cubic foot, the silo capacity should be over 3,000 cubic feet. A 60-degree cone fitted with air pads to facilitate lime flow during feeding is recommended. Feeders used for lime are either volumetric, such as this rotary vein feeder, or gravimetric, that is, weighing type. The feeder is generally located beneath the silo. With volumetric feeders, the output per revolution is calibrated and the quantity of lime is controlled by the number of revolutions that the feeder makes for each batch of asphalt. Gravimetric feeders control the lime feed by weighing the lime, generally by means of a small weigh pod suspended on load cells beneath the silo. In batch plants, the lime is weighed as a separate batch ingredient and blown into a small hopper just above the hot mix weigh batcher. This batch plant utilizes electronic controls for assuring that the correct amount of lime is fed for each batch. At this continuous drum mixer plant, a similar gravimetric feeder is used. The feeder is operated continuously, providing a uniform flow of lime to the drum mixer. Again, the plant operator has electronic controls tied in with the aggregate feed rate 
for ensuring that the proper amount of lime is fed to produce a high quality asphalt mix. A screw conveyor is generally used to transfer lime to the cold feed belt for mixing with the aggregate. It is enclosed to eliminate dusting. Covered belt conveyors are also used. At some batch plants, the lime is blown pneumatically from the feeder to a hopper located above, which then discharges to the way batcher or pug mill. In some drum mixing plants, the lime is blown directly into the drum, where it is mixed with a heated aggregate just ahead of the liquid asphalt entry point. Mixing aggregate with lime a key element in producing high quality hot mix asphalt is accomplished in several ways. At this batch plant in Virginia, a series of belt plows are installed over the cold feed belt, which fold the lime into the damp aggregate before it is charged into the dryer. With this system, it is important to attach resistant liners to the plows and to change them frequently to ensure adequate mixing. At this Texas plant, the lime and damp aggregate are first mixed with belt plows, then later by a double cage mill positioned at the head pulley of the cold feed belt, just ahead of the drum mixer. Pug mills are more commonly used for mixing lime with a cold feed. At this plant in Nevada, the screw conveyor on the left feeds lime to a small pug mill mounted at the discharge end of the cold feed belt. The interior of the pug mill, taken during plant shutdown, shows the mixing device. At a Wyoming plant, a small pug mill is also mounted at the head pulley of the cold feed belt. Lime is screw conveyed into the unit, along with water to dampen the aggregate. The mix is then belt conveyed to the drum mixer. A larger twin shaft pug mill is used at this permanent hot mix asphalt plant in Nevada. It is located ahead of the drum mixer. This plant in Idaho used a large twin pug mill for lime treating a plastic clay gravel, after which it was stockpiled for two days before being fed to the drum mixer. Lime served to reduce the plasticity of the clay aggregate during stockpiling. In Georgia, Drum mixers are often used for mixing the hydrate directly with the hot aggregate and liquid asphalt cement. This interior shows the lime blower pipe, which extends from the hot mix discharge end to the midpoint. The lime drops from the box end, where it combines with the hot aggregate. The liquid asphalt enters about two feet back from this point. In this drum, the flights at the lime discharge point have been trimmed to allow the lime to fall close to the dryer shell, where it can be folded into the hot aggregate, thereby minimizing dust pickup in the airstream. In the preceding scenes, the use of lime in new asphalt paving projects was featured. Lime is also used in recycling projects, as shown on an interstate highway job in Wyoming. Material from the reclaimed asphalt surface course was combined with virgin aggregate and new asphalt cement in a 50-50 mix, with 1% lime being added to each aggregate. The mix was produced in a drum plant. The virgin aggregate and lime were mixed in a pug mill, the material then going to the burner end of the drum mixer. Simultaneously, the recycled material and lime were mixed in a second pug mill, the mix then being fed to the drum mixer at the midpoint. The new asphalt mix was then placed, making a new surface course from the 50-50 mix. Since only one to one and a half percent lime is used in hot mix asphalt paving mixes, about 20 to 30 pounds per ton of mix, the total cost for lime plus the cost of equipment, its operation and maintenance is only about $1.25 to $1.75 per ton of mix. This is a relatively small cost considering the added durability that lime ensures. The use of hot mix asphalt to construct new roads and rehabilitate existing roads is a well-recognized engineering practice. 
Stresses such as climate, moisture, and traffic loads placed on these roads demand superior performance. The use of hydrated lime as part of this custom design mix is an economical way of providing the performance required to meet these stresses. When hydrated lime is used in asphalt pavements, there are many benefits. The principal one is as an anti-stripping agent, particularly when siliceous or clay-bearing aggregates are used. Lime also serves as a mineral filler that stiffens the mix at an early age, helping reduce rutting. Then in aged pavements, lime reduces oxidative hardening of the asphalt cement, thereby reducing cracking from brittleness. All of these benefits lead to more durable, longer-lasting, smoother asphalt pavements with lower life cycle costs.